Hello and welcome to another edition of the 16 Ounce Canvas, the Art Prayer for Your Podcast. My name is AJ Kearns and I am proud to be your host here each and every week as we do our part to introduce you to the artists and designers from around the world who help bring some of our favorite beers and breweries to life. This week we're going all the way back to the beginning. Our first four pack, weren't even sure if this was going to be a thing. Here we are 180 plus episodes later. Featuring the one, the only, Mr. David Paul Seymour. The man so big and crushing it and killing it that he needs three names. David Paul Seymour. All comes together like Voltron. He's just crushing it. We met him years ago, literally years ago, and have just been amazed and blown away by the incredible work that he's doing and continues to do with Burial. Planet of Doom, we catch up about that, which is coming out soon. You know, we got all the faith in the world. We're hoping for the end of 2021, beginning of 2022. So we get a little insight into that. Just learn about how things are going for him and his family during all this. And just it's just really a wonderful opportunity to catch up. Uh, David is just a killer artist. His story is one of the ones that resonates with me. Probably top five to this day of, you know, doing stuff on the side, doing poster, you know, uh, uh, gig posters and working with bands and doing that kind of you know the side hustle you know your boy loves a good side hustle but he was also he was a fucking architect so you know shit happens as we know you know people you know get laid off furloughed you know businesses go out of business and all that you know unfortunate stuff and just a side note if you know if you or yours is experiencing some shit during all this you know please know if there's anything we can do to you know, to help support and just know that, you know, hopefully, you know, this experiment and this experience will, uh, you know, will distract you or, you know, keep you, you know, feeling good and maybe, you know, maybe take a chance and go for something that you weren't doing. But he, Dave was an architect, you know, uh, that chapter ended, he was in between jobs, wasn't sure what he was going to do, but, you know, as somebody with a family, you just figure shit out and you know that whatever happens, you're just going to get shit done. And, you know, through the support uh, of his wife, she said, you know, why don't you go for it and try to make this a thing? And so here we are. He's doing it. He's busy as hell. He's crushing work. And he's just an all-around good person. Burrow makes some killer beers. You know, one of the, you know, first breweries I really connected with when I started trading beer. I've got a lot of great, you know, beer friends down in the North Carolina area. So thinking about it, we obviously, you know, if you're out there listening or checking this out and, you're in a burial distribution area. Get in touch. You know, the Skillet Donut. Oh, that, that beer is incredible, especially now with the winter months. But they just make some great beers and just, you know, so much respect to the crew of Burial. So this is episode 184. You're listening to the 16-ounce canvas, 16OZ canvas. You may have saw that we are in USA Today. You know, March Madness, best labels of the year. Uh, check that out. Links in the uh, Instagram. We'll probably put it down here or, or over there when you're liking and uh, subscribing. So that was really cool to, to cross that off the, the bucket list. Every year had, uh, I was going to say FOMO, but I, I, I kind of hate that. I hate YOLO too, but hate, eh, strongly dislike. Um, I know, I'm old. You can see from all the grays in here. But it was something I just really wanted to be a part of because you know, I think that what we're doing here is is unique. It's our own. We're, you know, doing something, like I said, often, you know, imitated, but uh, never replicated. But, you know, and if you're out there listening and you're trying to get some advice on how to do it, you know, I'm going to have you come on your podcast. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to run with the idea, you know, your boy, your boy's got it and can do some good work. And, uh, but yeah, I think that, you know, here we are just making it happen. It's really just been a positive experience. One six OZ canvas, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now YouTube. We're gonna, you know, work in all of our, all that free time we have to get all of our previous episodes, you know, up so that you know we've got a lot of great feedback that people like to put it on, you know, whether at work or wherever they may be, and uh, gives them the opportunity to catch up on all the great episodes. So, if you have somebody you'd like to recommend, AJ at one six oz canvas dot com. We say we, but it's really me, myself, and yeah, I so. Another great episode. Always great to catch up. You know, we'll keep moving along. We're going to see how many of these we can do for uh, season 16. 
currently repping a little uh, Stephen Reboin, you know, Reboin Design uh, Incorporated, you know, uh, design company, uh, one of our uh, locals here in Connecticut. So got a lot of great artists. We're going to keep uh, pumping them out. We're, we're knocking on doors, making things happen, and uh, really excited to just catch up with some old friends and, you know, make some new ones. You know, obviously we interview and, you know, we hope that we hope they want to talk to us again. And, uh, yeah, so, AJ, stop rambling. Episode 184, David Paul Seymour, Burial Beer. Let's just do it. Let's just catch up. One of the originals, our first four-pack. I believe he's episode two. You know, those numbers in the first four-pack were just kind of arbitrary. But, we've you know, we're, we're going back. We hope to get uh, uh, Dan Blakesley and, uh, you know, catch up with some of the old crew. So let's do this. Episode 184. Let's crack a beer. Let's get into it. Look at this. A little soul sour. Cheers to the crew, Athletic Brewing Company. Uh, our squad over beer culture. Also, Rachel and Ryan Adams, who made this wonderful label, you know, in part with uh, the crew over at Fairfolk. See, we're tying it all together. Kevin Simo, Sam Kelly. You get the full circle effect here. We are the 16 ounce canvas. Salute. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I just thought it was kind of like all the shit going on. I thought it'd be kind of cool just to, obviously I wish we were having beers together, but I thought it'd be cool to see people's faces and just catch up and see how you're doing, man. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Cool. Well, I'm ready when you are. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just going to be more chill and talk and just kind of, you know, first of all, you were one of our, like our first day we launched the podcast it was one of yours. I think you're episode three or two and mm -hmm. I, I've been forever grateful and just that you're killing it. I mean, you're, you're one of the hardest working man in the show business, man. You're always, <laughs> you're always grinding on something and it's, it's really cool to see. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. I dig what you're doing too. I'm, I'm really glad it looks like things have kind of taken off and uh, they're moving in the right direction. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know what that direction is, but I just know that kind of, thinking about folks like yourself and just just kind of got to go for it sometimes and make the best of it and figure you figure it out later and it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of how we've been going about it you know i don't know what tomorrow brings but today's pretty good that's it man always got to be forward progression dude yeah so kind of update us yeah what's going on man I mean, you're always working i mean the labels of burial alone must keep you insanely busy but you're just you are you're like a machine man <laughs> Apparently, the sound off, the, the alarms still go off on your phone. But I got like a million alarms going off on my phone all day long. So Does that help you? Does that keep organized? Because I'm a space cadet. If I don't if I don't tell one of the the uh, Amazon Echoes to, to remind me on something, it'll just straight through. Yeah, man. Calendars, alarms. I've got a task list uh, built into my Google Calendar. And it's the only way. Yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't remember shit. I'd be really screwed, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, so kind of give us a kind of a, where are you now type thing? What, what's going on? Oh, and I'm man himself. Mr. Uh, David Paul Seymour. And yeah. Yeah. You, I, I'm sorry too. You asked me about the uh, busy busyness uh, first, but uh, yeah, man, I don't know. I, I definitely stay busy and I'm thankful for that. Burial keeps me pretty busy and the other half of my time is devoted to uh, split between, you know, heavy metal bands, you know, uh, merchandise and album covers. And, um, then the other half of that half is my, I guess, just own personal projects, you know, just mm -hmm. making a little time to work on what I want to work on. How's, uh, how's Planet Doom going? It's going really well, man. Um, you know, like, uh, it's, it's a slow, tedious, methodical process to make this film. Cause we don't like have, you know, this whole like team of animators, you know, we're not like an animation studio. We're just two guys making it, you know, I mean, there's a, you know, 15 bands and 15 artists who contributed all the raw material to it, but you know, they're, um, they're not in the production part of it. It's just me and Tim Granda. And so, um, it's really slow process, man. But I mean, every day Tim gets up and animates and, 
animates full time. And so, you know, I mean, it's moving along really well and everything looks so killer right now. So if anybody's watching this is interested in what the heck we're even talking about, uh, you know, go, um, I would say start by following uh, Planet of Doom on Instagram, and that'll give you all the right links to where the video. But there's all kind of video clips and stills and and cool updates and stuff on that. So, but um, yeah, and I guess to tell anybody who doesn't know what it is, it's a full length animated, you know, uh, animated motion picture that's kind of set to a score of, you know, kind of Doom subgenre heavy metal. And, um, you know, it's, it's a revenge tale about this guy who goes on this quest to kind of get vengeance on this three headed crew, you know, winged creature who destroys his whole village and his, you know, all his kinsfolk and his wife and everything. And so this guy's got nothing left to lose. So he just traveled this really strange kind of twisted, barbaric, psychedelic planet until he, uh, gathers all his, uh, you know, things that he needs on his quest and until he finally reaches the lair of this beast and slays him at the end. Spoiler alert, but I'm pretty sure. He, I was he, hoping, dude, if, that, if you're like, yeah, then he gets fucking eaten by the dragon. And then yeah, so. Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's really cool, man. It's got choppers and heavy metal and, and like, it's pretty much, you know, based around like what you would expect in a like Dungeons and Dragons quest or a video game where, you're on a mission you got to find these objects and all these witches that he meets gives him these objects through some kind of test and you know all that uh, you know really the fun is in the journey along the way but yeah it's going really well it's a cool project that i'm really proud of and yeah if we could just get it done a little faster that'd be great but that's kind of always yeah. every i'm sure yeah because we talked yeah we talked back uh I think it was till the 16 because you were episode two. So, I mean, that was, it was, there have been some heavy lifting done at that point too. So it's been really great to see, you know, it evolve, but you know, it's at this point, yeah, everyone's excited for it to come out. Like all the hard work you guys have put into it and yeah. it's just every, every, every phase gets better. Kind of with these little teasers and stuff like that. So I'm super excited. Is there a date that you're hoping for? I mean, I know that's probably like the, the killer question. <laughs> Yeah, so here's the thing. We were actually actively looking for uh, some investors to come on board and and uh, close the financial gap that we've got because Tim and I have pretty much also been not only creating it, just the two of us, been, but financing it as well. Um, you know, we had a successful Kickstarter and that money got, you know, spent a lot quicker than we could have ever imagined. It wasn't nearly enough. You know, again, we're, we're not like in the movie making business. We're just two dudes who wanted to do something cool. And so people got behind it, but that money went really quick. And so right now we're actively looking for um, some investors because we've vetted um, some other animators uh, to kind of come in and help Tim out. And if we get that and I feel confident we will then it'll be like total fucking green light go and like we should be able to actually finish it by the end of this year um mm -hmm. because we don't and and i just can't think like we won't like that just isn't how my brain i'm just no you know so but if that weren't to happen it, it would probably be looking at another couple of years still because it just okay. takes so much time you know mm -hmm. It takes about a full week of full time, 40, 50 hours a week to make about 30 seconds of animation. So, with one guy doing it, you know, so yeah. it's a process, but. Yeah. You got a link that we can, folks, can, is there a campaign going where folks can chip in, throw them in the hat, or are you just going like for a big. Really solid investors, because we're talking, we're talking a bit, a pretty big chunk of change. And uh, I'm not ruling out going into another crowdfunding situation but um i'd love to avoid it i'd love to bring people in who um have the coin to come in and do it and, and then get a percentage of be part of the mm -hmm. you know um management team and ownership team and and then just get it done you know so um i'd rather not labor over another um you know crowdfunding situation but i'm not opposed to it but yeah got some people we're talking to who seem very interested and we'll see how things go yeah i mean yeah i'm in a pandemic so asking you know it's always uncomfortable at this time to ask people for for some extra scratch for stuff like that but it's just 
I don't know. It's amazing what people do and what they love. So people love your work. So, I mean, I, I just want to, I can't wait to, to go to that and check it out in the theater. It'd be epic. Yeah. If, theater, if yeah. 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 I can, oh, I can always see, yeah, the, the, the merch and the, the bands coming together, like playing at Doom Fest. Like it'll be, yeah, it'll be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it will be. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it will happen. Let's positive energy. I'm sending it your way, and I, I, it's facts. It will happen. So, when we talk next time, it will you'll be telling me when the when, when the premiere is and where we can go check it out. Yeah, that's exactly right, man. You're right. Yeah. So, uh, so how are you doing? I mean, like I said, we're we are we're closer to the end than the beginning with the pandemic. But how are you holding up? And how's the family and like like real life shit? How's that going? Good, man. I mean, I, I definitely can't complain. I think I've been really lucky. Like, um, I, I don't know how, but I, you know, maybe it's just my tenacity, but I've, I've managed to keep the, keep doing what I'm doing and, and not lose much, you know, in the way of revenue, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really good, especially considering what I do and who I do it for, because, um, you know, like burial, they, they, they had to kind of do a little shuttering, you know, on their business when it really hit and, you know, they were in like a lockdown and, but man, they are adaptable son of a guns, man. They, they, they made it work a hundred percent. They, they yeah. found other ways to sort of, um, you know, flip their models and and keep it rolling and they didn't skip a beat and kind of the same for me i've done kind of the same thing i've found ways to just keep it going and mm -hmm. you know you got to be adaptable and i think we're not going to see an end to that kind of having to having to have that kind of mindset if you're owning a business or um you know whatever you, you have to learn how to adapt because these times i don't think things are going to get uh less crazy i mean i think we'll go back we're gonna we're gonna see a time here soon where we all can go back to like hanging out and and being in public and doing things and going back you know into places and all that but i think craziness is just kind of going to be part of the dna of modern culture now going forward there's always going to be something whether it's a new pandemic or whether it's you know, some kind of political turmoil or fucking whatever it is, you know. Um, I just don't think things are going to be like, you can't rely on things to be like they were 10 years ago or whatever, you know, anymore. So um, adaptability is the name of the game. And so, yeah, buckle up and do the best you can, I guess, you know. But uh, things have been going really well for me, man. I mean, like I said, I haven't really missed much. And um, knock on wood, it stays that way. But I'm lucky too that I didn't like uh, start just doing this w around the time, you know, like be a newbie to doing what I do and how I do it and doing working for myself and all that. I mean, I've got, you know, uh, a solid 10 years almost now I, under my belt of, you know, I mean, I've been drawing professionally for a very long time, but it's been about 10 years now that, you know, left the last day job I had and just sit here every day and have fun and, you know, lucky to keep doing that. And, you know, your your story of being an architect and your wife just telling you like, why don't you work for yourself? Is probably one of my my favorite to this day. Like just doing what you love. Like I kind of we have. I should. I was. It started about beer and stories like yourself kind of made me got my scratch in my head, being like, shit. These are people stories, right? Like hard work and just kind of figuring ways to get shit done. And I always look at that and like, man, like he fucking went back to grinding and being an architect, like he'd be miserable right now. Right. Like mm -hmm. he'd be good at it. But yeah. So I, I just, yeah, I, I, your story is one of the ones that always sticks with me. So yeah, I love it. Yeah. That's not uh, long. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. The, then the challenge never ends, man. I mean, you know, you, like I was saying about being adaptable, you can't, you, you know, just cause you get it doesn't mean you get to keep it. So you gotta. Yeah. Figuring ways to make things work. And yeah, I definitely take advantage of all, some days almost feels like all 24 hours in that day, but yeah, you just gotta, gotta get shit done and, you know, and see what tomorrow brings and figure it out, get punched in the face sometimes, but you know, it's, uh, you know, insert other generic cliches about marathons and fights and you're good to go. That's like the post game. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm always hearing that. I'm just like, they must have like a cue card. Like, Oh, I said this one yesterday. Uh, yeah. I'm going to pray to God today. And then I'm going to thank this guy tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, good. 
Well, it's a team sport, man. We just go <laughs> give it our all and hope for the best. 110%, and... right? Right? One foot forward, pants on, right? <laughs> 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 so, a lot of people, I mean, a fair amount of your work is like is music stuff, though, given that. I mean, I miss live music like no other, but how, how has that been? I mean, how are, how are your clients adapting? Cause live music's kind of sadly taking a little bit of a. a yeah. Dip. I'm seeing it come back. Oddly enough, uh, my wife and I were just talking about this this morning. We've again, been at this long enough where like, we've kind of got like our trends mapped, you know, and, 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 and like, honestly, like late October through, you know, kind of nowish in each year is is always just just a flat dip, man, on the music stuff, um, and and it I think has a lot obviously to do with the, the you know their touring cycles mm -hmm. and you know the weather and you know this is right you know the last few months of when these guys have been holed up you know writing new material getting ready to hit the road for the spring or summer, and you know so usually right about now is when things really pick up so there there was a lull to be had anyway but um that lull reached back a lot further uh you know or, or earlier in the year than normal um but again just made it you know made it work despite of that but yeah you know these bands are really taking a hit unfortunately like a lot of bands that i really like and um whatever like they've broken up or you know they they've gone on a hiatus which normally means they when people do that it's you know there there's like a percentage of whether they're going to return or not you know from that so i mean that that really sucks because I, I know there's a lot of bands that got lost uh due to this shit uh just because you know you only i think it's a combination of you you only willing to play to yourselves in a rehearsal space uh, for so long and then also you know some bands actually rely on that extra income of touring and doing whatever to make make their ends you know so um it's rough i mean it's like a lot of other things you know i, I know a lot of good you know restaurants bars breweries uh music venues especially have uh shuttered up and they're gone you know because of all that and um yeah, that sucks, man. I mean, I'm like you. I, I cannot wait to get back to going to see live music again. And uh, obviously, that monster component of who I am and what I do. Uh, I don't just draw the the pictures. I mean, I'm in the trenches, you know, right. in, you know in the front lines, like giving it my all, you know. And so I miss doing that. But um, it'll come back, man, and hopefully we, we haven't lost too many people, and maybe even some of those bands that broke up decide to maybe get back together when things get solid. So, yeah, cool. uh, yeah, I'm ex hoping for some, yeah, some great new albums, records, songs, because people got a lot of time in their hands and mm -hmm. new shit. And I, I, I also think like the pay per view kind of style, which had had a little bit of popularity, I think you know more bands will have that option too for another revenue source. You might play it to a club of 250, but if you have a good HD camera, you can get, you know what I mean? Even if it's a couple bucks extra ahead, that's just like icing on top. So I think there's gonna be some, some cool shit that will hopefully happen from that. I mean, I don't know, I take even a bad, a bad set of music right now. So, I mean, it's like, at this point, I'm just ready to like get outside and dance, you know, and just get down. I know. What kind of music do you listen, listen to mostly? Uh, I go all over the place, like for live music, I like, I'm the, I like fish is probably my favorite. I've seen them the most. Like they, I equate that with like summertime. But then I like kind of uh, rock and roll. You know, I kind of go all over the place. I haven't, I've been, I haven't been to too many metal shows, but I've been to enough. Uh, my probably was talking about it's not really. Well, I guess it's metal. But Rage Against the Machine was probably my first, and that was that set the bar pretty hard back in like the '90s. But it was, yeah, Beastie Boys. Uh, I mean, they're not touring, so if it's good, I'll, I'll check it out once or twice. I mean, I don't like hard picking country like 20 stuff is not for me but you know if it's got a good good story i can get behind it i'm a good songwriter it just depends on depends on the crew and where like i don't know i can't say no to a lot of music like i said so it's hard for me to i i hate labeling stuff saying i don't like it because then if i get turned on by something then my algorithms on those all the 
tools are all over the place, which is yeah. good. I think now we're up to like, I think with Spotify now like seven different ones and they're pretty much night and day. So I'm pretty happy with that. So it's, uh, yeah, I kind of go all over the place. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I, I listen to heavy metal predominantly, you know, but like I'm a huge jazz nut, you know, yeah. I love like old seventies and eighties country music and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I like, I like Frank Sinatra. I like, uh, classical music, you know, I mean, I, I spend a lot, actually a lot of time listening to a lot of different stuff, but generally when I'm working, I'm, I'm listening to metal, but you come over to my house on Sunday and I'm cooking a big pot of something <laughs> jazz or, or, you know, some country music on or something like that, just to sort of like, you know, kind of balance my, myself yeah. out. You know? So, yeah. yeah, I like, uh, like Jason Isbell. He's probably one of my favorites too. Like he's kind of has like a modern day, like rock country and he's, he's got good stories. You know, he battled uh, like substance abuse and stuff like that. And it's like super appreciative just to like to be alive. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's cool. Cause we saw him when he was in his old band drive by truckers that people love, but and he was a mess. Like I like I just remember he had a full bottle of Jack Daniels in front of him and was just like drinking it like by the fistful. And I was like, this is that guy does not seem well, like he does not seem like a good place. And uh yeah, and so it's kind of nice to see him get his shit together and like just just tell some sad, sad, awesome songs. But yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. I, I don't mind yeah. a little little sadness. No, no, man, that makes for the best music to be honest. Just uh, anger. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Anger, sadness, right? And heartbreak, I guess, is the third. But yeah, it's all kind of that's the funny thing. All these I like I like to do like a metal song, it's like converted into like an acoustic, and you just get to hear like lyrics or someone converts a, a poppy song into like metal just to show you that like someone else could have done that same wrote that same lyrics and it still relates to different people. So yeah. I don't know. Beer and music, I think, bring people together. I think we could use that a little more than ever. And food. Yeah, those are the three, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just constant uh, things in, in my life that seem to just tie me uh, together with, like, social situations. And I love it, man. You know, get some good tunes, something good to drink, something good to eat. And it's like, yeah, everybody's happy. You know? Yeah, it's much easier. You're sitting next to the, yeah, I, mean, I miss that, like, the going to pick up dinner and just, order it there instead of like just curbside hit and go and grabbing a beer and you don't know who you're going to sit next to. And, you know, you're both there, you know, you already have that in common and right. it's a good start. It's a good starting point. You know, sports too helps with that, but that can get a little crazy at times. So, yeah. so are we in, are we in the studio? Is this where the magic happens, right? Is this where you, is this where it happens? Yeah, this is it, man. I seldom, I seldom leave this chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your perfect ass, like molded it. Yeah. Yeah. It's how I feel some days. It's like, oh, lift I got a new chair. Lift my arm up and there's a, sh a shackle and a fucking chain attached. <laughs> yeah, they, they slide. Yeah, they, they open the back door behind you, slide the meal in to get you, yeah, get you to work. Yeah. Are, you, are you an early riser? Do you start, like, do you get at it when the day goes? Like, I wake up at 6 a.m. flat every day, every single day, weekends too. Yeah. And what time yeah. are you down? What time you, What time's ass and seat? What time you? What time's your first schedule? Uh, I am usually going through what I call my office routine, which is like all the clerical stuff, emails, billing, booking, uh, shipping out orders, all that stuff. Um, 6.30 and 7 o'clock, I'm, I'm my hands on the stick drawing, man. So Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, um, but my day is also really crazy too. I mean, especially with COVID here, I've got, you know, three kids here. They have to get dro drove places and me and my wife switched those duties up. My wife's back in school, um, you know, virtually, but you know, so like everybody's home, there's errands that need to get run. There's, you know, you know, something's falling apart around here. I got to grab a screwdriver and fix it, you know? So like yeah. uh, my, my day's like this kind of crazy combo of, uh, just juggling, juggling those two worlds constantly. And, you know, my, I usually, my head hits the pillow somewhere around like 11 or midnight and okay. up doing it again. So. Yeah. It's been, uh, yeah, I have the boys home with me once, like now they're back a couple of days in person and my wife's a teacher. So it's just, each day is just unknown and just kind of like, like I try to plan as best I can, but it just gets, 
it gets crazy some days. It's just kind of like, and then I'm the shitty, I'm the terrible homeschool. You know, I wouldn't say shitty. I'm better than I was last year, but my kid, I was, my, my youngest is seven and, and I, his teacher is like the most chill, like Zen master ever. Like kids are just like, shit's going everywhere. Kids are bringing their dog up on the TV. And she's like, yep. okay, class. I'm just like, yeah. She yelled the other day and I heard it across the house. I was like, uh-oh, shit got real. That was like a month, two months worth of like pent up, like what the fuck are you doing, Johnny? Like, it, you know, it, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, luckily my, my kids are teenagers and one of my kids, uh, he's out of school. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's past that point now, but, uh, you know, my daughters, they're, they're seniors in high school, so I don't have to, I don't have to homeschool anybody. You know? mm-hmm. I have to give them rides everywhere. Cause I don't know with these, you know, when, when I turned 16, which is at that time where I lived, that that's, that's how old you had to be to get your driver's license. And yeah, me too. I, I think I was down there. I, I think I turned 16 in the middle of the week. And I think it was like a Friday afternoon. I was, I, w- I was down there ready to take that goddamn test and get driving. And it's like a whole different world. Now these kids, they, they're just not super inner. And, and I've talked to a lot of other people with kids my age and, and uh, it's the same deal. They, they just kind of, eh, I'm not in a big hurry, you know, to drive or to, you know, whatever. That was like absolute freedom and independence to me. Oh know. yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember my parents, I think it was like a delay tactic. They said, you have to pay for some of your insurance if you want to get your license. And I was like, all right, that, that's fair. So I started working like 14 and I was putting, you know, basically nickels and dimes together, but it was, I couldn't wait the day I got to take my, my and I was like always young. All my friends were older. So I was always having to get a ride that day. I was psyched. I failed the first time, but like, it was all good. You know, I'm still not a great, great parallel Parker, but whatever. They don't check anymore. You get it once, then you're good for your life. Oh, I, had, <laughs> I had to parallel park maybe two or three times in my entire life and I'm old as shit. So it, it's not a lot. And then I've had a couple instances where I go downtown Minneapolis and there, there's a parallel park situation. I'm like, I'm going to find a garage, you know, that's what I was just gonna say. I'll drive around I'm like I need a straight drive in or whatever. But it's just it's always like a, it's or the one spot's always in front of like a restaurant and there's always people up front. I'm just like, uh. yeah, exactly. Oh, you know, we've we've gone to go downtown to a specific restaurant and go pull up and go. This parking situation blows. Let's go somewhere. It's like you know, there's places I we still haven't eaten at because it's like it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? So yeah, I just. I, I'm really bad at it. Just, I mean, that's, that's one of my like shitty habits. I'll take that. But like, I'm just bad. My wife's always just like, let me do that for you. And I'm like, yes, but I'm like, my pride won't let me do it. It's only like 85, like a little back up. It's just, yeah, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I drive a, uh, you uh, probably drive like a beast of a truck or something. Yeah. I drive an F one fifty, and I think what it says, it's like 18 feet long or something like that or whatever. It could even be longer than that. I don't, I don't even know how long it is, you know, whatever, but it's, it's a big truck. And then it, it's like, you know, I don't care. I don't care if it's got a backup camera and beepers on it or whatever. I'm just not comfortable with it. So I just know it's not going to work out. <laughs> yeah. You feel it. I think sometimes you just got to know what you're playing with and make the best of it. And uh, I'm not a, I'm not a Parker. I'm okay with that. Whatever. That's not going to be a make or breaker. So, no. uh, so with burial, I mean, cause you're still putting out stuff and they've gone to a bunch more cans now as a lot of other folks. How has that increased the amount of work you're doing down there? I mean, because more cans or are you just kind of yeah. the same consistency? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good volume and consistent volume. I mean, you know, I do minimum of two uh, cans a week for them. And uh, there's, been, there's been times where they've thrown an extra one or two things in there and, and just almost tied up my whole week, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's super consistent and, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's like the entirety of, or, or like the majority of what I do, but it, it's damn close. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a lot of work and they're definitely the most meticulous client I've got, you know, um, but I think that comes out of like an understanding we have where, you know, not that everything I do is an approach with the same amount of care and quality, but it's like, you know, they, 
Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's almost anal retent, you know, to the point, you know, of like, uh, perfectionism or an attempt to mm-hmm. get, you know, and like they treat their brewing their beer the same way. That's why everybody raves about it. Why it tastes so good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the art's gotta be nothing less than that too. So it was, whether I feel up to that every single week or not is not up to me. It's, it's. So. You you have to create that madness. Is there how is the process? I mean, two weeks is pretty pretty steady flow in terms of theme. Is there themes, or they tell you certain imagery that they're hoping you're going to create, or how how you how you guys working that? Yeah, so for those two a week, I mean, we we have uh, like a, uh, me and the gal who who's kind of she's in charge of kind of working with me, but the ideas come down from uh, Doug. Uh, Reezer, the guy who owns it, uh, he's super hands on about the uh, the art direction and like what he wants. Like he knows going into each week. Okay, here's piece one, piece two. He's already got a crazy ass name, you know, lined up for it, and he knows exactly what he wants. And um, it really, to be honest, it comes a, a lot out of his imagination or his just crazy, you know, whatever. And uh, a lot of it winds up being just interpretation on my part which is really great because honestly if i had to come up with the ideas uh and try to wrangle them through feed them through the whole pipeline of of their approvals and their you know thing it it would like it would it would drive me insane number one and number two it would eat up so much time i wouldn't even have time to draw so i mean i like kind of going in and and already having it kind of uh thought out uh to some extent Mm -hmm. obviously by the time i get my hands on it and work it there's a lot of my um creative input embedded in there but i like going in with at least a brief you know and something to say like you know i'm thinking of this you know Mm -hmm. and so you know i have meeting with her in midweek our week actually kind of like our art production week kind of runs from like a wednesday to wednesday kind of thing and so start off Wednesday, we get on a call, we walk it through, I ask whatever questions and, and, um, and then, you know, get sketching and those kind of go through an approval process, finish it up, that gets approved. And then it's off to the races and she's got to take that and turn that raw art into a, you know, finished label of some kind, whether can or bottle or whatever. And, uh, and by that time, you know, like today's Wednesday, I already had the call like literally before I got on this interview with you and, and uh, I'm literally finishing up something from last week uh, because it's got to get done today because now I got, I got three, literally three projects now just got dumped on me to it, it we rinse and repeat, you know, so. Now does she kind of now you're, she's kind of like your whisper. Does she now speak like. You know, like, do you guys have a good rapport where she knows how to translate the, like, from the, from Doug to you? So you kind of know it, how you're going to, your output should kind of go or kind of give you the direction? Oh, yeah, man. She is amazing. She's fairly new to the team. Well, I, I say that, but it's actually, it's probably been a couple of years now, you know, but like, there was some other people doing it in the past. Uh, the and uh, you know it actually started off with Doug's wife, and then it got passed to another guy who's super awesome. And then they tried hiring a firm that was local to them to do the job, and that didn't pan out. Good guys, but like just you know did, it wasn't a good fit. And then she came on board, and and it's amazing how fast time goes by. I want to say it's got to be like a couple of years, but yeah, I don't know, maybe it was three, but. Anyway, working with her has just been an absolute treat. And yeah, over that time, she's really, really fucking dialed everything in. She pulls the best from from Doug and manages that crazy fucking dude. And then like pulls the best out of me and manages my, you know, ass. And, and then like just makes it all work. She's... He's like amazing. And I, I, I always tell Doug, whatever you're paying her, dude, you ought to pay her a lot more. So. <laughs> got on, got on video, pay her more, Doug. Yeah. And the beer has been, has more distribution now too, which is really cool to see. I, I think sometimes the company would get it further up here North 
which is pretty awesome. So that's kind of, that's also exciting. I mean, they're, they're just pumping them out. So I, I've always, I think we talked about early on, my first few fo- like pe- friends I made from beer were North Carolina folks and I always, always get burial. So it's, uh, especially those, those stouts, those donut skillets. Oh, they're fucking so good. Aren't they kid, man? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, I think I think like, damn, I haven't had those in a while. I'm like, I'm going to text my boy after this and be like, yo, let me know. Oh. Yeah. Tell them to send some my way too. <laughs> yeah. It's tough for me to, because they, they, they're not here in Minnesota at all. And, um, we, we just recently actually found out we can order it. Like I think Minnesota just dipped into some kind of law or something where like we can order a beer and wine now, like, and have it like, it's not illegal for it to get shipped here. It was a, a thing before. Yeah. So, so many fucking bureaucratic governmental state and it's all state stuff, you know, every state's completely different and whatever, but um, not to get off topic, but so That's yeah, pain, yes. it's yeah, a pain. It's like- them to you know get every fucking new beer that they i mean because the output is insane and a lot of it really limited and i've told them in the past like you know don't get uptight about trying to save me everything and send me everything or whatever you know that was kind of a two-way street because it's crazy for them but also i'd rather let the uh you know the market get a hold of you know i mean if they're only making you know 80 cases of of, of, of a beer or something like that. Like I, I, I don't want to tie up even a four pack of that. You know what I mean? I want to let um, the fans get a hold of it, you know, and, but um, you know, and then I know too, well, if, if I want some, I can pay for it and, and have it out here, you know, when I, when I want it, something really strikes my attention. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, le- it's not to forget legal, but like, I kind of get, I talked to a few folks at like Tavor and other sites that like ship, and they were just, they were just like, ah, can I get just a pain in the ass? Like it just became more work than it was worth. And we just, we'll, we'll probably come back at some point, but right now, just, cause we had like limited volume for a while here in Connecticut. Like you can only get like a case or a case and a half at a brewery, which doesn't seem like a ton, but if you're making it, if people are driving far to get beer and they go right over the border into Massachusetts, like Treehouse, and they get six, seven, eight, nine cases. It's just people, so they change that, and then there are all these like little tweaks. But it's always like, it's always reactive, not proactive. Like it just, it's just kind of, it's kind of maddening. But we do get some delivery in state, which is not bad. Some of them like Fridays, like a beer, and a guy knocks at the door, and he's just like, "Here you go." So that I love that. I love that move right there. But it's not yeah. easy. Yeah, I tend I try to support it. We we drink a lot of local Same beer, here, yeah. and uh, we wind up like. Um, Trying to fix my desk here before it falls on my lap. Um, you know, like we try to, uh, you know, support all local breweries around here. And it's crazy in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Well, just Minnesota in general. My wife looked it up. There's 198, I think she said, breweries uh, in the state of Minnesota. Craft breweries, you know. And, um, man, you can't even keep up with it. It's, it's no. ridiculous. You know, I get friends all the time send me text and oh man check this, you tried this i'm like no, I, I never even no. heard of it i haven't left the fucking house in three weeks like you know three weeks and like i, don't, I mean i leave the house but like not to go stop by a random brewery you know it's like come on yeah yeah no i get i get i gave up on it you know trying to keep up with it anyway so yeah it's a good problem to have we got yeah uh yeah we've got some good ones here in uh connecticut which has been it's been good. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited. I mean, it is, it's definitely helped and I got to try some different stuff. So, yeah. So, so if I look over your shoulder, that's a lot of kiss memorabilia. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. That's not even all of it. It's just all I've had time to, I call that the kiss corner with a K you know, corner. Yeah. 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 Kiss corner. Right. Yeah. So they kind of like that you're there. You've seen them a lot in concert. Actually, no. I've I've actually only seen them three times, uh, and the first time I saw them, I was I was six. I was in first grade. It was the first concert I ever went to, and I begged my parents to take me, and they did. And then I saw them again in uh, I think eighty two, three or something like that. But um, yeah, and then I took my son when he was like 
maybe 14 or something or, or no it was actually in 2014 whatever however old he was and um that that was the third time i've seen him and i haven't seen him again since i kind of almost don't really want to see him anymore now um it's it's not the same and it's not the you know they're missing half the two you know, the band that i grew up on and i fell in love with that are still to me you know but yeah they're the thing about it is they're just they're they're my favorite band i mean they were like childhood heroes of mine and you know when it when i grow i mean i actually started listening to kiss when i was three i took to music like really really young age and um my uh my mom would get me whatever the newest kiss records each year came out would get them for christmas you know yeah. so i'm right there on i had to look up there on scooby-doo i remember that like way back in the day i think they've done it since but I remember that as a kid when they were on Scooby Doo. Yeah, I think I think they actually did like three different Scooby Doo cartoons or cartoon movies or whatever was in conjunction with Scooby Doo. But yeah, Scooby Doo would always get like the random ass like, <laughs> like the Harlem Globetrotters beyond like all these. Yeah, I used to oh, I used to love that shit. Yeah, yeah, they're they're one of those rare things in my life where I still like if you know if I'm looking at those old records or pictures of them or whatever I get, I get the feels like I just feel like a little kid and like you know I, I'm aware over the years that you know people is like they're they're goofy and campy and to a lot of people or they uh you know even a lot of people like oh they're they're not even great you know they're not really good musicians or they're not you know whatever and it's like I don't give a fuck about all that stuff man and you know to me yeah. they're just epic you know what i mean and they're like they're like superheroes almost you know it's like i look at that stuff and it's more like looking at some kind of like fictional superhero than it is looking at an actual person you know what i mean and yeah uh, so yeah I mean, just a ton of nostalgia for that and me and i just i don't know i love it but how many how many times were you uh one of them for halloween as a kid oh every fucking year dude every fucking <laughs> It was like Spider-Man and Batman maybe a couple of years, but they actually, in the 70s, when uh, when I was a kid, being them for Halloween, like it was really easy because they actually had these awesome fucking cheap like, uh, costumes. It was like, it was like throwover things, right? Those like, like sheets, right? Like kind of like the... It was like it came in a box, man, and they had a little like plastic mask. Yes! And you put that on... And then they had like, yeah, the plastic, uh, you know, it's like, I don't even know what kind of like just cheap, thin plastic suit, you know, and you put yeah, that. Like, Flammable as hell. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I had like, uh, but I was usually Gene Simmons most of the time and still he was kind of like, and I know he's like super douchey guy. I, I'm able to separate the, the real people from the the superheroes in my mind you yeah. know like um he was just my favorite he always looked cool and you know he was always like he was like the super metal one and like the evil demon and you know always like dark shit you know like that like i, you know, I just gravitated to him you know but they were kind of like the beatles in a way man like everybody you ever talked to who who liked them they had their favorite you know yeah like, you know, like I'm a genius. They're smart too with their with their marketing and like you want to call it a gimmick, whatever it was. But it was people weren't doing that, and it was also had like also like a. When I was a big wrestling fan when I was a kid. Like they have a record, they had like a very wrestling like like I remember and even they had a wrestling team. It was a demolition. It was basically like yeah. kids wrestlers that were like in that white fit. You know, I don't know. I I, I think that as you probably the age of social media unveiled like the douchiness of some people that we really liked and wish that they never like were revealed. Like I think Gene Simmons probably gets a falls into that category once he had all these megaphones that, that it was like, oh stop talking to you. Just play some music and put the face paint on. Like yeah. yeah. Yeah exactly. Yeah. That's what they say, man. Never never uh never seek to meet your heroes, they say. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll fucking let you down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they'll let you down. You know, they'll disappoint you now. I like I like to it's so funny, man, because all these all this band stuff that I work I've done work for, I've been really lucky in that regard because every every guy I've ever met, man, like uh that either um was somebody I idolized younger or prior to getting into the business, or it was 
bands that I really respected after getting into the business, every single one of them I've ever met or spent any time with or hung out backstage with or, you know, sat and had beers without a festival or whatever, man, or, you know, like talk to on the phone still some, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to do that. They're all so fucking cool. And I think that's just because the true kind of metal community versus like the, the big arena rock bigger than life kind of com celebrity community is, is a night and day difference. You know, it seems like these guys like never kind of forget where they come from and, you know, kind of who's got their back, which is people who, you know, they're fans of their music or whatever. And, um, you know, even somebody that me is not in the business and doesn't have a little something going for them. That is just an everyday fan. Like it's nothing for any of those guys, man, to like, just go in front of the venue and stand there and smoke a cigarette and just bullshit with anybody that wants to fucking talk with them or whatever. And I love that, you know? So that's the, that, that's a that's a plus because I love doing work for people and then getting to know them and finding out like the, wow they're really cool you know yeah because yeah when you find out they're not it's just like ah uh, just it just it becomes like yeah I used to do radio for a while and I know you did you know you did some radio and stuff but oh that was the worst if I meet somebody and they just sucked like that was it was just kind of like because you'd hear their song and you're like ah oh, I just like it had a way of just like didn't connect anymore and it was that was the worst so yeah i'd always kind of like i remember just being telling my wife like oh so and so is coming you know I, I just hope they're cool and like yeah you see stuff or social media is good to confirm that sometimes you see like they wrote this or they did this thing like and off the grid and weren't looking for credit and like they're just being good people and you're like oh good they live up to it they're not just like an ant like they're not just playing up on tv so that was yeah i uh i did meet robert plant uh of zeppelin and he was he was cool as hell so that was good he was like super chill i was really happy about that yeah there's a lot of those big star guys who who i've heard are super really cool man and um i got to i got to uh i i had actually had jason momoa uh buy mm -hmm. some work from me and uh and just you know really super brief encounter but just the conversation we had at the time it was like man he he's just like a really cool guy you know kind of like normal kind of goofy guy you know goofy in a good way you know just kind of fun loving goofy guy you know and so some of those people man they're they're, they're really chill and cool and and there's no problem and then some of them are you know i don't know i've never I've never well the funny thing too is i've never met i guess i i, I should say that i've never I've never met Gene Simmons, so he might be the nicest fucking guy in the world. All I'm going off of is everything I've ever heard. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, if you never actually met the guy, how do you know? You're just taking somebody else's word for it, you know? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, yeah he made himself into a character, like, literally. And that just, yeah, he was an early example. It just kind of ran, and to your point, yeah, he could be, yeah, he could be the guy at the soup kitchen every week and doing all sorts of stuff we don't know about and just kind of, you know, right. I mean, maybe just plays it up for the cameras. Yeah. And I, I have a few ideas I had for friends of mine or actors, like a whole show where a family has like their public, like social media, Facebook family, you know, and kids yeah. get like their allowance based on how many likes they got on their post. But then just like you pull back and you're like, are these like, what are we really as people? Like kind of always just think like how many times did that family take, take, try to take that photo to make themselves look like they're happy. <laughs> yeah i don't know but. a little dark but yeah <laughs> so well i just wanted to catch out with you brother i wish i could give you a hug and have a beer and whatever i uh yeah you know, i don't know if i tell you enough but i just appreciate your support from the get-go uh I, I love what you're doing you 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 inspire me and i'm just really uh glad that we're able to, you know your episode two so you know that's we're at 180 something now. And so just to be wow. here, yeah, 12 countries, like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. And so you were, you believe in me and think it was a good idea, or maybe you just were like, what the fuck that day it was, uh, was a game changer for me. So I just wanted to thank you for that. And you've, uh, you know, you're, you're a part of our success, whatever that means. And if anything I can ever do for you continually, you know, yeah, I, I just, I appreciate you, man. Well, I appreciate you too, man. Like I said, I'm really happy that everything is going so well for this thing because it is a really cool idea. And, um, 
Yeah, and like I, I, I think you're on to something, and and were from the beginning. That's very you know original in your take on it, and uh, yeah. you know, a lot of people talk just about beer, but to spend time talking with the artists who make the visuals is super fucking rad. Obviously, I'm speaking from a bias, but uh, yeah. You know, I love it, man, and I wish you continued success. And yeah, we'll get that beer. We'll get that beer together in person, man. It'll be awesome. Sounds I can't good. Wait. But uh, yeah, be safe, and I'll talk to you soon, man. Yeah, AJ. Thanks, dude. You have a great yeah. day. All right, brother. You too. Bye, everybody.